नमस्ते हमेशा खुश रहो बिखिया आई एम जेव इन डॉक्टर लिली त्रिवेदी एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू गिव अ लेक्चर ऑन बायोनोमियल नोमन क्रेचर नो वॉट इज बायोनोमियल नोम क्रेचर इट इज अ फॉर्मल सिस्टम फॉर नेमिंग द स्पीशीज बाय नेमिंग टू ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन वन ऑब्जेक्ट सो इट कैन बी बाय मीन्स टू एंड टू नेम्स आर देयर in one complete name now it is informally the names are in latin the language used is latin the first part of the name is the genus and the second part is the species and uh, for example human beings are known as homo sapiens so homo is the genus and sapiens is the species The formal introduction for binomial nomenclature was given by Swedish natural scientist Carl Linnaeus and in the Planterium in 1753. So here we have a, the Linnaeus system of classification. Binomial nomenclature scientific name that means there are two names they are important because each gives a name to each organism that everyone can identify there is confusion of common name which can be avoided by this binomial nomenclature now the first name represents the genus and the second name represents the species or it is always written in italics or underlined with the first word capitalized for example a pet dog is written as canis domesticus here we see the canis c is in capital letter now as for classification we have the natural system of classification morally often followed it is based on the plant affinities and is there is a classification of seed plant proposed by bentham and hooker commonly called as it is george bentham and sir joseph dalton hooker now what this system says it helps to determine the relationship between various groups of plants but it does not bring out the evolutionary relationship among the different group of plants as such for the binomial nomenclature it was governed by and agreed internationally and the society which is their responsible is called international nomenclature for nature and international nomenclature for algae fungi and plant nomenclature so the general principles of binomial nomenclature was common for both iczn and icbn that is botanical nomenclature but there are some differences which is the use now the first letter of the first part of the name is always capital letter but the first letter of the second part of the name is small now they are all no displayed in normal text but italicized if they cannot be italicized they are underlined now we have another the botanist suppose thomas drummond has given so we will write florix for drummondi now this is the authority of the binary name to whether it can give the binary name in which it was first mentioned the publication date can be also given now the latin name as we all know is used for nomenclature and it is names about a particular field or for example we hear the binomial nomenclature in biology for human beings it is called homo sapiens so it is a way of an organism to be called with two names homo sapiens now we should have it in italics or we should underline it. so binomial nomenclature is a formal system 
for naming species by naming two objects in each object. Now, now let's come to now the every part species is a part of the binomial. Now let's these are some examples. Let's come to the salient features of ICBM. The generic name is a singular noun. The first letter is always written in capital. The specific epithet is an adjective and is always written in small letter. What is an adjective? It is a word which describes a noun. So it is derived from many sources and consists from one or two words. For example, Oriza Sativa. Now this Sativa is describing Oriza. Now the name should be short, precise and easy to pronounce. Now whenever we give a name in the through the binomial nomenclature, it should be easy to pronounce. The bi binomials are written in italics or underlined. That's why I was saying should always either type in italics or write in underline. Then the generic and spec species is separated and underlined separately. Okay. When new names are given to any plant, then the herbarium preparation of the same specimen with original description is preserved. Now this specimen is denoted as type specimen and is preserved in the herbarium sheet. Now the person who describes the plant for the first time or gives it a name, new name to the plant is called as author. The name of the plant should bear the author's abbreviated name at the end of the specific epithet that means species. This specific epithet word is called species. Now this is called author citation. For example, Carl Linnaeus gave the name Malva Silvestris. So we will write it Malva Silvestris L dot or L I N N dot. So this L I N dot is an uh, abbreviation for the scientist who first gave the name Marwa Silvestris. Suppose it was given by Joseph Delton Hooker. Then we should have written H O O K dot. Then we have the original description of the plant should accompany the Latin transcription. So this is always used in Latin translation should always be there. If the naming of the plant is from a source of error, so it is regarded as ambiguously. So it is also called as nomenclature ambiguum. And then it is completely ignored and not used. Now if the genera and the species are the same, you come across a name, it is called as Toto name. That means Sassafras is the genus and Sassafras is the species. But again such names are not accepted in the nomenclature. So these are some of the rules of International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Now why do we classify? We classify or the aim of classification is to arrange plants in an orderly sequence and how are we going to arrange them on their similarities the closely related group plants are kept in a group and the unrelated plants are kept far away the other aim of classification is phylogenetic classification that means they are closely related shows more similarities than differences if one plant is in the same order or in the same class, they are more closely related. Now, there were some systems of classification. I will discuss in very brief artificial 
natural and phylogenetic artificial system of classification is was given by Carl Linnaeus in his book Species Lanterum. He divided the plants into 24 classes and it is also known as the sexual system of classification. The floral characters were studied and were considered very important. For example, Zinzibirci was present in monocot and Anacardaceae in dicot. But the major defect of this system was that totally unrelated plants were kept together. So it was not considered good. Next was the natural system of classification given by Bentham and Hooker. More number of characters were considered in this system of classification and according to the information present at that time it was best. But it did not bring out any evolutionary relationship between different group of plants. Then the third system of classification was the phylogenetic classification. Now what happens here, genetic relationship as well as evolutionary sequence was also considered. So taxonomic characters were considered in relation to this phylogenetic classification. It was given by Adolf Engler and Karl Frankel of Germany and they published a monograph Die Naturalin Plangsen Familien. In this system of classification, floral characters such as single word of perianth or no perianth, unisexual flowers were compared to perianth with two words, bisexual flowers pollinated by insects. So this was a highly advanced system of classification and followed and accepted everywhere. So students, I hope you have found my lecture interesting. If you have any query, please give in the comment box. I will resolve it soon. This session was powered by digital version 2.0 of Jyoti Vidyapit Women University. Namaste.